Okay, let's take a look at Autotune 7, the flagship version of the Autotune family. At the top left, we have the input type menu. The choices are soprano, alto tenor, low male, instrument, and bass instrument. Set this to match the audio Autotune will be processing. Next, we have the tracking knob, which sets pitch detection sensitivity. The default of 50 is ideal for most types of music. You can try more choosy settings if the vocal track contains a fair amount of noise or the vocal itself is breathy and contains a lot of guttural sounds. Keep in mind that to reset any knob in Autotune, you can simply double click on it. Next up is the left right pitch reference selector. This only applies to stereo tracks. This parameter determines which channel of a stereo track Autotune will monitor for pitch detection. The next section is where you set the key and scale that will be the basis for Autotune pitch correction. The key menu covers all notes in semitones. Use the scale menu to set the pitch correction scale, which can be adjusted in the edit scale display. Autotune 7 offers 29 different scales. If you don't know what scale to use, start with chromatic and then edit notes as needed. Scale detune shifts the reference pitch of the scale itself and not the actual audio. Autotune scales are based on A4 equals 440 Hertz. If your music uses a different scale, you need to set it here. The range is in cents, and of course, 100 cents equals one semitone. The transpose knob changes the pitch of the source audio. Values here are in semitones. Where scale detune changes the reference pitch of the scales and keys in autotune, transpose changes the pitch of the source audio itself. Turn on formant correction when transposing. Next up is Autotune 7's formant correction and throat length parameters. Formant correction should be turned on whenever pitch correction moves pitches a semitone or more. Without it, pitch correction would not sound natural. It's okay to leave it on at all times, though it only really helps when the correction notes are not close to the original pitches. The throat length knob is only available when the formant button is turned on. This knob lets you adjust the length of Autotune's throat model. Move it to the right to increase the length of the throat, which makes a voice more male sounding. Move it left to decrease throat length, making the voice more female. The correction mode switches auto-tune between graphical mode and automatic mode. The pitch change amount meter shows how much pitch correction is being applied. Beneath this meter is the edit scale display. This is where you can adjust the notes based on the currently selected scale and key. Edit these notes by clicking on them in either the bypass or remove column. Bypass notes pass through Autotune unprocessed. Remove notes cause pitches close to them to be corrected to the next closest note in the scale. Set major sets a major scale based on the current key. Set minor sets a minor scale based on the current key. Set all resets all removed or bypassed notes. And bypass all and remove all bypasses or removes all notes. When a chromatic scale has been selected, the virtual keyboard at the bottom of the Autotune window is available for editing. Keyboard Edit sets notes to be either bypassed or removed. Just click on the keys to bypass or remove them. The Keyboard Mode sets the behavior for these clicked keys. The default here is Latch Mode. Click a note, it stays clicked. When set to Momentary, you must click and hold on a key. Editing keys on the virtual keyboard only affect specific notes unless Octave All is turned on. Let's take a look at the Pitch Correction section. Retune speed sets in milliseconds the speed at which pitch correction is applied. It is the parameter responsible for both transparent pitch correction and the ever-popular vocal effect. Want to sound like T-Pain or Cher? Simply turn retune speed to zero. For transparent pitch correction, settings around 20 or 30 milliseconds work great. The humanized parameter sets slower retune speeds for longer notes, which can help keep pitch correction sounding natural. Natural vibrato works on the vibrato in the recording. Set it towards minimum to narrow the vibrato's width. Set it towards max to increase that vibrato width. The targeting ignores vibrato button can sometimes help keep autotune from pitch correcting wide vibratos to two different pitches. Autotune's create vibrato section can add vibrato to the track being processed by autotune. Turn it on by choosing a wave shape. The choices are sine wave, square, 
and sawtooth. Sine wave is usually best for emulating a natural vibrato. The rate knob sets the speed of the vibrato. These values are in hertz and the range is 0.1 hertz to 10 hertz. Variation sets a variation for the create vibrato's pitch, amplitude, and rate parameters. This helps humanize the vibrato. Pitch, amplitude, and formant amounts for the created vibrato can be adjusted with these knobs here. The onset delay and onset rate values are in milliseconds, ranging from 0 to 1500. Onset delay establishes how long autotune waits before the create vibrato parameters kick in. Onset rate sets how long it takes once the onset delay has been reached for the vibrato to reach the full value set for these controls here. Onset delay and onset rate do a good job of emulating how singers use vibrato. Autotune 7 has two parameters in the MIDI section for establishing pitch correction via MIDI. When Learn Scale from MIDI is turned on, MIDI note data coming into Autotune sets a scale on the virtual keyboard and in the Edit Scale display. The MIDI data does not need to be played in any particular order or even monophonically. Target Notes via MIDI sets correction notes in real time. When those MIDI notes have stopped, the target notes they created will no longer exist.